Hi, I'm Cheryl. This is my tiny house that I helped build. I'm here at the Bird's Nest Tiny House Community in East Texas. I've been living in my tiny house for six years, going on seven. I lived at Tiny Lots on the Prairie in Decatur for five years, and I've been here starting my second year. This is an 8 by 18 house built at a workshop at Incredible Tiny Homes in Tennessee. At the Bird's Nest, I pay $4.50 for the lot rent. It includes the septic, water, trash pickup. The only thing I pay extra is internet and electricity. And during the worst part of August, my bill was either $50, $60, and I kept it cool. It was very comfortable. Starting on the front is my porch area. Let's go have a look. Because the pads are 30 feet long and my house is only 18 feet long, that's the turkey <laughs> and the dog, <laughs> that leaves me quite a bit of room here in the front and I spend a lot of time sitting on these steps talking to people or knitting or anything else. It's a nice place to sit. I have a flower garden. It's usually filled with sunflowers, but sunflowers get pretty ugly in the fall, so we pulled them up and other things are coming in now that they can get some sun. We have it all wired off to keep the ducks out of it, but the turkey can still get in and take dust baths every once in a while. Well, that's it for the outside. Let's see the inside. Come on in. Welcome to my tiny house. It's uh, about 140 square feet, 18 by eight, and everything in here is custom designed just for me and my size. Starting here in my living area, I have a TV that's mounted on the wall so that I can also watch it from the bathtub. It's this size because I Googled how far you have to be back from a TV for each size, and I cannot get any further back to have a bigger TV. So this is the TV I have. <laughs> this is my living sleeping area. If you're the only one in the house, I thought when I was designing this, I'm the only one in the house. If there's something I won't be doing at the same time, like I won't be sleeping and, you know, crafting, hopefully at the same time. So if I can combine those two functions in one space, then I've saved space. So this is my bed and my couch and my chair. <laughs> it's a twin and I nailed crates to the back wall to make shelves because I, I don't move when I sleep. I'm dead to the world when I sleep. So that's all the space I needed and everything I need is in here. At night I pull down the shades and I have blackout fabric so it gets totally dark in here. I like it dark when I'm sleeping. I have a lot of my craft stuff is in here so this is my watercolors. I have a warm and cool temperature of the primary colors and a black. And so that's all I need. I have knitting needles in here. This is my yarn bowl for when I'm knitting. And then this is my corner where I sit most of the time is here. I had them build this window lower than the other windows and with a wider windowsill so that I can put my cup of tea right there. And so I'm perfect right here. The remotes go in this little basket over here <laughs> and everything's within reach. I ended up putting siding on the house, white siding on it, and things were so dull <laughs> that I painted like a stained glass window on the shade so that part of the day it's down and my stained glass is on the bottom window. <laughs> and other times it's on the top half and it matches this stained glass window that I have here. I had it for 20 years in my regular house and never had anything I could do with it. It just kind of sat gathering dust. And I have two of them and this is one. And the other one is up in the loft. But that's one of my favorite things is my stained glass window. So I did the two shades on this side of the wall, just Sharpie and some craft paint. <laughs> this is what I use for heat instead of the mini split. 
because the mini split is up high on the wall and so it would have to heat the whole top of the house before the heat came down to reach me and if I need heat it's because I'm sitting not moving around so I just heat this little area here the heat rises and hits the bottom of the loft and this one makes a little fire effect so I can sit there and pretend I have a fireplace <laughs> And I don't run it at night, but it has a thermostat and shuts itself off. And that's all I've ever needed. So I don't use the mini split for anything but air conditioning. It works great for air conditioning. And underneath the bed is where I store the majority of my clothes. I only have a few things I put on hangers, but everything else is in the front half, usually, <laughs> of these. Um, I just roll things up. I watched a Marie Kondo video of different ways of folding things and so I've got things rolled up in there. The other good thing about this is to make a bed that was high enough to have storage underneath it, it had to be higher than my legs will reach. So I can pull these out and put my feet on them when I want to put my feet down. <laughs> like if I need a lap, you know, to work on something, I'll pull it out and put my feet on that. So that worked out perfectly. I had somebody build this platform for me because it has to go over, there's a wheel well that runs along that side. I'll be 16.5 in April. I taught school for 30 years. I've been retired more than 10 years, about 11 years now. Yeah, a lot of people aren't able to retire that early, but I worked straight through. I didn't take any time off when my son was born. Um, I couldn't because uh, I had to support him <laughs> and me. So <laughs> I was able to retire relatively young and I did. I loved teaching, but I love being retired too. To wake up every morning and just think, what do I want to do? And I, I love my house so much that sometimes I wake up in the morning, I pat the wall <laughs> and tell it, I love you so much. <laughs> I now know what home feels like. It's when you, you walk in the door and you feel like this is yours. I live in about 10% of what I used to live in. And so when it was time to go tiny, I had to get rid of 90% of my stuff. <laughs> and I did, and it wasn't hard. It was very time consuming and hard to find places to take all the stuff, but it wasn't hard to let it go because all of it felt like a burden. And so everything I got rid of lightened the burden until I was down to my little 10% and it just felt like, okay, I can handle this. This is my kitchen area. I built these shelves. They come out further as you go up because when you reach, if you're short like I am, your hand comes towards you. It doesn't just go up, but it gets shorter as it goes. So they are graded from narrow to wider here. I keep, you know, things that come in bottles. <laughs> is the category for this old, it's some kind of storage thing from an old refrigerator. My cutlery is all in here. I don't have a drawer for that. So this is where it ended up. I have little PVC pipes in there so that I can separate it out. I know even if I can't see, if I'm in this little thing, there's a fork in there somewhere rather than having it all jumbled in together. The one thing I really wanted was a farm sink and a lot of people have said, oh, I'd never do that. It takes up so much space, but it's very handy. You would be surprised how many dirty dishes you can fit in this sink. <laughs> when it's not holding dirty dishes, it's its own kind of workspace. So I can do things in the sink, but I just always wanted one. So I got one. And this area is where my mixer, her name is Lucille, and my electric kettle named Irving, that's where they stay and I don't really use that for much work other than making a cup of tea. <laughs> I have the Corel dishes because they are very light and very thin, so they all fit in there well because I don't have like a support. I just have this brace holding the shelf so I can't get too heavy with plates and things. And then I have one piece of my china here. <laughs> if I make toast, I have it on this plate. 
and I also asked that this part be recessed so I could use it for storage. And on the top I have things from the collections I used to have. It's called Hall China and it was big in the 30s and the 40s and I kept a pitcher and these two little tiny teapots and I have some red ones that are up on the shelf up there. That's all that I kept from my great big collection. I measured everything out and had somebody build this exactly to fit the refrigerator and I did have a microwave convection oven combo and it didn't cook well. It microwaved great but it didn't cook well and so I got rid of it and this is a little Breville toaster oven. I've made pies in here. I've roasted things. It was the one that they said kept the temperature the best. So I bake anything I want to in here as long as it's not bigger than this. <laughs> And then I have the smallest microwave I could find up here. And the thing that I like about it is that it has a button where you can turn off the light. So it's dark at night. It doesn't shine because <laughs> I like dark at night. Underneath the ovens is what I use for my filing cabinet. It's just three hanging files and everything fits in there. And then I bought this little box my sewing machine fits in so I can just slide it out. I have a table that's underneath the TV. It's a circle table but it's a gate leg. So you unfold the legs, put the circle on top and then I can sew and then just slide it back in there. And this is my second refrigerator. I originally said I needed a separate freezer because otherwise it's just a colder part of the refrigerator. It doesn't freeze. I made sure that it was big enough to hold bluebell ice cream and a package of green beans. That was my limit. You know, I have all kinds of paper and craft things in there. My cookbooks all turned into this and this. You know, I tore pages out. I copied things onto notebook paper in here and got rid of the rest. So anything that wasn't like my grandmother's chicken and dumplings I got rid of. I can just look it up on the internet. Next to my refrigerator this space here is about a foot and my hanging clothes are in there. Beside it is the telescoping ladder that I use when I have to get to the loft. It looks like this and you just pull it up. The feet are kind of slippy so I use a bathtub mat to make sure that it doesn't slide out from underneath me. And this is my short loft. My big loft is over the bedroom space and that's where I keep all my fabric and all my yarn. Kitchen is much smaller than my kitchen in my big house but it's easier to work in because it's better designed. Well, it's better designed for me. I know I can't really use the back of the counter because my arms aren't that long, so I use that for storage. I measured my pots and pans and then had them build drawers that would fit. My electric skillet's in here, and I use that quite a bit. In here is a cast iron skillet because some things just aren't right unless they're made in a cast iron skillet, and a hot plate. And then this is everybody's junk drawer right there. Everybody has to have a junk drawer. And further into the house, this is my bathroom. I have a four foot tub, which is plenty big enough for me. I'm about a foot shorter than most people. So a bathtub that's a foot shorter works out fine. I have a tiny sink. <laughs> and my ironing board hangs up inside here. I'm putting another shelf in eventually, but you know, it's only been six years. I'll get to it. But yeah, this works well. I have washer and dryer hookups in case I ever decide that that's what I need. But I go to the laundromat every two or three weeks. We'll get it all done in a couple of hours when I had to go into town anyway. And I don't think I'd like giving up that much space. So it's been a good decision. But if circumstances change, I've got it plumbed for a washer dryer hookup if I need it. I had talked myself into a compost toilet if I had to, but I really prefer regular plumbing. <laughs> so I'm delighted that both places I've been parked, they're hooked up to a septic system. This is my dirty clothes storage. That's the one thing people always want to know. Behind that is an outlet because a lot of the compost toilets have a fan or something that needs to be plugged in. So I made sure there was a plug there. If I ever need to change to a compost toilet, I can just take this out and put one in there. I 
needed to be able to build it to be able to afford it. But, you know, I don't have depth perception. I'm very short. Um, I had a shoulder replacement already and I can't remember anything. So, you know, even studying up to build one, I wouldn't be able to remember that much information. But one night I was online and I saw a video of somebody who's talking about that he built tiny homes and you could come to his factory and bring like a work crew with you, some friends, and the carpenters there would help you build your home. And that was incredible tiny homes up in Tennessee. So I went up there with some friends in the summer and there were people there who are also interested just in going tiny and they all helped me build my home. It was framed out and then, you know, we did everything else. And that was, you know, like the best and the worst week in my life. <laughs> It was in an old parachute factory from World War II, and it was July, and you know, you go in and no air conditioning, and it's an enclosed space, so the mosquitoes were, you know, we just constantly sprayed the bug spray on, then it sweated off, and then sprayed on again. <laughs> and on the cement floors, and you even slept there. You had a little bunkhouse. You ate there, you slept there. It was like summer camp. But after a couple of days, I told somebody, I wish I could <laughs> cut my feet off and put them in another room so I can't hear them screaming. <laughs> I heard everywhere. But everything was built exactly to my plan because I had spent years planning. I had graph paper where I'd drawn out, you know, measured everything and I, this could fit here. I built it out of Lego. I made a little cardstock house that even had a little washer that you could open the door and there were little clothes drawn inside it. <laughs> so I spent a long time planning before it was even possible, but I've always loved small spaces. And so I knew I would be comfortable in one. I think it was 11 or 12,000. And then I added on some things like the mini split was extra, but that was, you know, that's pretty cheap for a place to live. It still is really, really cheap. And it's not something that Incredible does anymore because they couldn't afford to do that. It was perfect timing that they were doing that just at the time that I needed a house. And it's kind of neat that my son actually lent me the money to buy the house because I hadn't sold our house yet. I couldn't wait for the house to sell. And even though he was very hesitant about me being in a tiny and the timing of it, he lent me money so that I could do it. Um, which, you know, I still thank him for it. I tell him, you know, any happiness I have is because of you, because you let me do this, you helped me do this, and I'm happy and it's because of you. I think Tiny teaches lots of lessons, probably differs from person to person. You can simplify things down to where you can handle them. Things don't have to be more than you can do. You can simplify your life until it's the size you need. And this is the size I can handle. I can't handle anything bigger than this. And that I can be a happy person, that I can wake up happy and go to bed happy. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.